Hi, I'm Dave from Garmin. We're going to talk about the capabilities during the climb and cruise phase of flight with the G5000 upgrade for your Beachhead 400A or Hawker 400 XP. G5000 manages you through departure and it provides you with a wealth of information to enhance your situational awareness while en route to your destination. In a previous video, we learned how easy it is to set up your G5000 for takeoff. Now let's take a look at some of the capabilities while climbing out and en route. In our previous video, we loaded a flight plan out of Aspen, Colorado on the Lens 8 departure, and then we're flying down to Phoenix and we're planning on the Eagle 6 arrival with a winds low transition. So right now, we're at the end of the runway, runway 33 in Aspen, and getting ready to take off. We got everything set. We look over here. We're cleared on our clearance up to 16,000 feet. We've got our frequency set and we're gonna go ahead and couple on the FMS on our departure. The nice thing with the G5000 is it's gonna be able to fly this departure. Once we reach 400 feet, we can couple the autopilot. And what it's gonna do on this departure, you fly run or you fly heading 300, 343 degrees till you get to 9,100 feet. Then you make a left-hand turn to 273 to intercept the Aspen localizer outbound to Lens intersection. And then at that point, we're going over to uh, Grand Junction. The other great thing is we can see here on the map, if we take a look, you can see on the map how it goes to that heading to approximately 9,100 feet where we're going to be, and then our heading 273 to intercept. So everything looks correct on the map. In this case, I went ahead and put TAWS up on a split screen display. So I'd like to see the terrain in case anything happens that I can stay in the uh, in the lower elevations getting out of there. And that's the same, something with the G5000. We take a look, look at the detail on the map here with your terrain and the synthetic vision. What a huge help over our uh, previous avionics. So now I'm gonna get this system flying. So this is me just setting up the simulator, getting in to uh, give us some speed. So we're just gonna start out at a couple hundred not. Now we're climbing out, heading up to 16,000 feet. And let's say we reach our 400 feet, I would go ahead and engage autopilot and be in the nav mode. Now it's going to fly the departure as published. So we're climbing now along heading 343 at 9,100 feet. We're gonna see over here, it's gonna initiate the left-hand turn to 273. And notice too, the way as we're climbing out, the way the terrain in our TAWS looks. As we climb out, and you know, we're getting farther away from the, uh, from the terrain. Now, we're just gonna fly this heading, and we can look over here, heading 273 to intercept, and that's intercept to the, uh, it's gonna be about five miles away. I may push on my autopilot selector, sync my heading bug, just because I like to see heading bugs sync. And it's looking really nice that we're a couple thousand feet above all the terrain now on our way out on this departure. So, pretty slick with the G5000 on, uh, on flying these departures, especially if this is a great example with a couple uh, heading changes to altitudes. So let's say we're climbing along and now they say uh, climb and maintain uh, flight level 250. We can just reach up and go change our altitude to 250 and this is where, where I see that altitude as we're coming along. And now we're about to intercept the, uh, uh, the course outbound to Lynn's intersection. And it actually is uh, uh, that simple. So I may at this point just go make a full screen map off the pilot map, just so now I don't really care about the TAWS. So now I can kind of look at the big, big picture of how everything is. Notice too on my map, I even have my other traffic flying around. You're gonna see some of that traffic too they come in front of you in 3D on your primary flight display. 
So now, as we're climbing out on the departure, let's say we get a call and they go, uh, uh, we got a little reroute for you. We got some radar outages coming up. Go ahead after Grand Junction, expect uh, Fly Airway J15 to Rattlesnake. Romeo Sierra Kilo, then J44 to Winslow, India November Whiskey. So now we just got our reroute. So after uh, Grand Junction, which is Juliet November Charlie, we're gonna go here into our flight plan. We find Grand Junction, we touch it. And now once we touch a waypoint, it gives us all the options. We want to insert something before it, insert something after it to go direct to that waypoint, activate a leg between two waypoints. We could do a long track and offset to the uh, waypoint. We could hold at the waypoint or just find out more information about it. That's all there just by touching a waypoint in the flight plan. But in this case, we want to load airway. So there, load airway, there's Grand Junction. And we said Juliet 15, J15. We've got that and we're going to Rattlesnake Romeo Sierra Kilo, and it says load airway, we load airway. Now, off of a uh, Rattlesnake, they told us to go ahead, and I believe that was to uh, J44 over to Winslow. So I touch Rattlesnake, load airway. There's J44, Winslow, load. And now I have that airway in my flight plan. It's actually that easy. Now what we could do is go look up at the map. We can zoom out on our map, twisting this knob, and look and see what our flight plan looks like, kind of get the big picture. Then I can zoom down into it. So we've climbed out. I've got the flashing for my barrel change since we crossed 18. And we can just push our barrel knobs and sync those up for standard barrel. And let's say at this point there's a good time. They say now climb and maintain flight level 380. And we go up to 380. So we're climbing out. We've got our airway loaded up. Let's show a few of the features while we're uh, uh, flying along. So earlier I was zooming in and out on the map. And you do this with the touchscreen controller, the bottom corner zooms. Or I can then push it and then it brings up a cursor that I can pan around the map either by using the joystick to zoom in and out and pan around the map or by using a touchpad that comes up and I can actually pinch zoom out on the map and use my finger to move around the map. Now the beauty of the Garmin products are anything you see on a map you can point to and get more information about it. So right there, I highlighted Rattlesnake VOR RSK. If I look down at my touchscreen controller, it says info, and it gives me the information. There's the frequency, 115.3, and actually I could put that in my nav one active if I wanted to give it a courtesy dial-up, and then just hit back, and I'm back out on the map. Let's say as we're flying along, I see an airport. What is that airport? So I highlight it, I press info, it brings up the airport information page. So I could go look at frequencies if I wanted to listen to their ASOS. I could go put that in my number two com and listen to the ASOS. I could touch the weather tab. If I have my XM weather, it's gonna bring up the current weather at that airport in the terminal forecast if they have one. I've got airport directory. It gives me all the phone numbers, tells me the FBOs, the rental cars, all that information. All that was just by going up here on the map, pointing to an airport and pressing info and I can look kind of at my arrival how I'm coming in even once I highlight the arrival waypoint it'll pop up a little window on my speed and my altitude restrictions on that waypoint so pretty nice the ability to pan around a map especially when you're looking at weather coming up on the map so now that we're looking at the map there's lots of different ways to configure it so right now on the touchscreen controller I'm going to home and I look at map settings. I press map settings and here's all the options. I can do sensor. Do I want to turn on NextRad data? I do. And now that I turn NextRad data on, that's going to be on my map. I could have gone weather radar and that's actually going to put my active radar overlaid on my main primary map. 
I'll go ahead and do next red data. I have inset window. This is very nice. I can put on my flight plan and have it displayed on the bottom of my multifunction display. And there's two different ways to display your flight plan information on your multifunction display. Then we can go to aviation. Do you want to turn things on and off? Do I want to put airways on my map? Now I've got airways on the map or I turn them off on my map. Normally you'll set up the map the way you like it and probably not really play with it that much as far as your configurations. There's also this map detail button, which is kind of a major declutter where you can take everything off but your active route or turn everything on onto the map. So a lot of configuration to your map. Now we can hit half and I can split the multifunction display in half. Now I as a pilot on the left hand side get to control the left hand pane. The co-pilot controls the right hand pane. Now on the co-pilot controller I can zoom in, zoom out, go back to home screen. I could switch what kind of map I want. I could just put weather radar on. I just push the weather radar selection, go to weather radar, and I put a radar display up. I also have the ability to overlay radar on a moving map on this side and then have next red radar on the other side. So now we'll just go to the home key and let's go to map selection. You also have the ability to bring up another pane over on the primary flight display. Now you'll reach down in the pedestal and there'll be a little knob and that'll let you change over from a full screen over to a split screen. So it'll display like this. Now to control, these two panes are the co-pilot side. To control between them, you just push the joystick over and you'll notice a little highlighter at the top. When I push it over, it highlights the map that you're active with. Now my controller adjusts that screen. And I could go lay TAWS over on that screen. I could put charts up on that screen. You have the ability to configure it the way you want. So when we say multi-pane, this is what we're talking about. And we'll come back. And I can just go full screen pilot side now on the primary flight display. So a lot of functionality in our map. So now as we're flying along in the arrival, let's say they give us a uh, your clear direct uh, rattlesnake at this time. It's simple. We just go flight plan, highlight rattlesnake, direct to, enter. And now we're flying direct rattlesnake. Now as we're going along the rattlesnake, let's... Uh, Say, hey, looks like things are getting a little congested down in Phoenix area. We're going to have to have you hold, hold over the VOR. So uh, hold southwest, plan on holding southwest on the 224 degree radial, uh, 10 mile legs, expect further clearance at 1850. So to highlight, to uh, hold at a waypoint, now we're going to highlight Rattlesnake and we're going to hit hold at waypoint as an option. We're going to do right-hand turns because they didn't say left. And uh, we're going to hold on the 224 degree radial, 224, enter. They're giving us 10 mile legs instead of time legs. So there's distance. We'll go 10, enter, and expect further clearance at 1850, enter. Then I can even hit show on map as kind of a preview of my hold and I can see how we're coming in and then where my holding pattern is on the map. If I like it, then I just press create and that's in my flight plan. So you can see now on the map, we're gonna go down here and it's gonna put us into the hold over RSK. That's the basics of using the capabilities of the G5000 during climb out and cruise flight. To learn more about the G5000, watch the other videos in this series.